coming soon to Earth Touch. It's the survival stars. Come, little fish, into the shady nook. No, thanks. Bugger. Oh. What's on the menu today, Timmy? Water kapoo. Yeah, get out. Get inspired by the quirks of nature. You can't help but admire my stripy attire and the pipe fish. Now I'm going to rub my eyes and, hey, are you still here? Coming soon to Earth Touch. They've got to be the ugliest birds that we have. There's very little attractive about these creatures at all. But they are incredible survivors. Largely scavengers, they feed off carcasses um, of elephants or anything really. They eat amphibians, um, they basically eat anything, insects. They are real survivors. As winter sort of pushes in and, and hits this area quite hard, the water is largely evaporated and a lot of it has seeped into the ground already. A lot of fish and stuff get caught in these isolated pools. So there becomes a congestion of uh, a multitude of species and presents an opportunity and always first to take an opportunity are the marabous. They circle really high and uh, uh, keep an eye out and as soon as others start going in they just start flocking and then they together work the pools and just take as much as they can get out of it. I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me. It looked like little pieces of earth were moving. Sakile whispered, Terrapin. The Terrapins loved that it was hot today and soaked up the sun. They were very small and I identified them as marsh or helmeted Terrapin. They are also very shy, and at the slightest movement, they disappeared under the water. Doing some research, I learned they have soft shells and keep away from water inhabited by crocodiles. The terrapins seemed happy here, camouflaged and surrounded by all they wanted. The Namakaru is an ancient land form from the time of the supercontinents Pangaea and Gondwana. 
and of the creatures that lived then, 50 million years before the dinosaurs. These were the therapsids, the direct ancestors of modern mammals. Imagine the scenes which played out on this earth every day, long, long before we came into being in our physical form. Giant creatures which roamed the land. Creatures like Bradysaurus. They were the rhinos of the late Permian period, 250 million years ago. See how the inner skeleton of this massive pachyderm resembles the outer fleshed form of the great white shark. Some of these Bradysauruses have been found embedded in Karoo mudrock, still standing with raised heads as if trying to survive some cataclysmic event. And four million years later, almost all these creatures were extinct, wiped out by a huge biological catastrophe which marked the end of the Paleozoic era. The first dinosaurs only came into existence 30 million years after this event. Flat-topped mountains and vast sun-baked plains, ancient rocks carved by wind and water and ice. Huge rivers depositing layers of sand and mud onto the ancient Karoo Basin. Animal and plant remains entombed in these layers, petrified into fossils like this diictodon, a prolific little herbivore which burrowed its den and down into the soft floodplain sediments near rivers, where it sheltered from extreme climatic conditions and also protection from predators like the gorgons. These terrifying Gorgonopsians were the super predators of the late Permian. Saber-toothed therapsids ranging in size from wolf to monstrous beasts over 2.5 meters long. And then came the end of the Permian period. Complex life on Earth almost exterminated. Over 95% of all known plant and animal species disappeared forever. And so we have to ask, can this happen to us? And that's how it is today in the Great Karoo.